Hello everyone, welcome back to the chemical engineering channel and the module which we are following these days is related to heat transfer operations and we are bringing the lecture number 4 on the heat transfer operations. So in today's course proceedings we will be discussing the heat transfer mechanisms and we will be discussing one mechanism in detail among the all mechanisms and we will solve one numerical related to it. So before starting the lecture, let's have a reminder that heat is a form of energy which can be transferred from one system to another system because of temperature difference and this heat transfer is always from high temperature to low temperature medium. Thermodynamics is linked with the equilibrium and is linked with the amount of heat transfer but it does not account for the time parameter which is considered by the heat transfer. So now again heat can be transferred in three different modes. Number one is conduction, number two is convection and number three is radiation. Obviously we will be discussing all these aspects one by one but now our focus today will be on the conduction and again all these mediums require that there should be a temperature difference and this temperature difference will be from high temperature medium to low temperature medium. Now if we talk about the conduction, what is this conduction? It is the transfer of energy from the more energetic particles of a substance to the adjacent less energetic ones as a result of interaction between the particles. For example, if we talk about a system where the molecules are placed over here and if a heat like in this case and the heat is transferred to this molecule then the temperature of this molecule will be higher and then because of the temperature difference between these two medias and if we say here temperature is T1 and there the temperature is T2 then because T1 is greater than T2 and there exists a temperature difference between these two substances or atoms and since these are adjacent to each other as a result the heat transfer will take place. So that is why it is called as conduction is the transfer of energy from the more energetic particles of a substance to the adjacent less energetic one as a result of interaction between the particles. So I hope that concept is clear to you. Then it can take place in solids, it can take place in liquids and gases as well. Now in gases and liquids due to the collisions and diffusion of the molecules this happens. In gases obviously gas particles are moving continuously. And what happens that once you transfer the heat, the collisions between these particles increases. In the case of liquids, because their principle of diffusion is applied over here, so as a result of the diffusion, the heat transfer takes in the liquid media. But in solids, it is the due to the combination of vibration of molecules in a lattice and the energy transport by the free electrons. Like as you can see, there are different atoms present. Then one will happen that the heat will be transferred to it, the molecules will vibrate and once they vibrate they will transfer energy and to understand this mechanism let's have a look at this animation that you can see the heat is firstly supplied then atoms are energized and vibration increases and finally vibration is spread throughout the material so i will keep this animation for you to have an understanding that this is a metallic rod in which atoms are present obviously this particular portion is dealt with and heat is transferred and once again the Heat is transferred to the atom, atoms are energized and vibration increase and as a result, once vibration is increased, it transfers from more energetic materials or particles to the less energetic particles. If we talk about another example that a cold can drink once it is placed in a room which is warm, then obviously after some time that drink will also be warmed. And how that heat transfer takes place? This heat transfer takes from room to the drink. And how that happens? Through the aluminium can by conduction. So you can see if this is a room and in a room the can is placed over here. So what will happen? The heat transfer will be from this room to this can. And again, since there is a solid media involved here, which is the aluminium, for example. So what will happen from this aluminium? The heat transfer will be from aluminium to the liquid material. So again, it will be the form of the conduction which will be involved here. Now the rate of heat conduction, it depends on various parameters. Number one, the geometry of the media. Number two, its thickness, the material of the medium and the temperature difference across the medium. Now it has to be noted that the geometry of the media that like it's cylindrical or spherical or what type of material it is. The thickness, the higher will be the thickness, lesser will be the heat transfer. Like if I say that if an insulation is installed across 
this can that what will happen that there will be very very less heat transfer from the room to the can the material of the medium that how much it is suitable for heat transfer like we usually say that it is resistant or non resistant or what are the properties so that is also specified by a parameter which we will be discussing in the upcoming part and as well as the temperature difference across the medium the higher the temperature difference the higher the heat transfer rate for example wrapping a hot water tank with glass wool which is an insulated material reduces the rate of heat loss from the tank so i was already discussing that its thickness and again the material of the same the thicker the insulation the smaller the heat loss and a hot water tank will lose heat at a higher rate when the temperature of the room housing the tank is lowered because of the temperature difference the heat transfer rate will vary that higher the temperature difference higher will be the heat transfer and again further larger the tank larger the surface area and thus larger the rate of heat loss so we can say that the higher the temperature difference higher will be the heat transfer rate the more will be the area the more will be the heat transfer rate but the thicker the insulation the lesser will be the heat transfer rate so that is the overall summary or overall dynamics we can draw from this information now if we look at this diagram that this one if we label it as xi or x1 state and this one is as x2 state so that will be the delta x and temperature is transferred from this point to this point and obviously temperature is reducing or temperature is trans heat is transferring in the direction of decreasing temperature from t1 to t2 as you can see the heat transfer direction is from t1 to t2 and this represents the area so rate of conduction is proportional to the temperature difference across the layer and heat transfer area but is inversely proportional to the thickness of the layer as we have seen previously for a water can where if we have increased the insulation amount or we have installed the insulation the heat transfer rate is decreased if we have increased the temperature difference the heat transfer rate is increased and again in case of area so we can derive it as rate of heat conduction is directly proportional to area multiplied by temperature difference divided by the thickness and if we call it as mathematically q of conduction is equal to k a t1 minus t2 over delta x and this k is the thermal conductivity and we will discuss it now and this a represents the area the t1 is the initial temperature t2 is the final temperature but whenever we write it in terms of delta t or somewhat like that so it usually becomes t2 minus t1 once it will become t2 minus t1 the negative sign will come and this negative is now placed over here we will understand it more once we are solving the numerical so minus k a delta t over delta x now this delta t is actually t2 minus t1 so once this negative will be coming here this will become t1 minus t2 where the constant of proportionality k is the thermal conductivity of the material which is the measure of ability of a material to conduct heat if i go back again and here we have discussed that the rate of heat conduction is dependent on the material of the media so this material and how its ability to heat transfer is represented by the parameter which is k which represents the thermal conductivity of the material now in case of limiting reactant where delta x approaches to zero this equation becomes q conduction is equal to minus k a dt over dx and this relation is called as fourier's law of heat conduction and once we talk about the general principle or a basic equation for the conduction phenomena we will always name it as fourier's law of heat conduction which is q is equal to minus k a dt over dx and dt over dx which is represented on a tx diagram and again it will be from x1 point to x2 point for t1 and t2 like if i take you back again and here you can see this one is x1 point this one is x2 point this one is t1 and this one is t2 so obviously if you ignore other parameters then this is the overall dt over dx diagram for the system so this relation shows that q again is directly proportional to area directly proportional to heat temperature difference but is inversely proportional to the thickness and we can often label it as l which represents the thickness of the layer so for a better understanding let's solve a numerical relation we have been given that the roof of an electronically heated home is 6 meter long 8 meter wide and 0.25 meter thick and is made of a flat layer of concrete whose thermal conductivity is k is equal to 0.8 watt per meter degree centigrade the temperature of the inner and outer surface of the room one night are measured to be 15 degree centigrade and 4 degree centigrade respectively for a period of 10 hours so we have been given the area information 6 meter long 8 meter wide 
we have been given the information about the thickness 0.25 meter k is also given so we have been given k a the thickness l initial and final temperature of 15 and 4 degree centigrade so obviously we can calculate the first the rate of heat loss through the roof that night which is q is equal to k a dt over dx and the cost of the heat loss to homeowner if the cost of electricity is 0 0.08 per kilowatt hour and this value which will be calculating in kilowatt so we have been given the answer of 10 hours so we will multiply it but how for this we have to see the solution but before going to the solution the assumption is that the steady state operation condi condition exists there is no change with respect to the time and the two constant properties can be used which is k value for the system so area is equal to 6 meter multiplied by 8 meter is equal to 48 square meter k is equal to 0.8 watt per meter degree centigrade and q dot is equal to k a t1 minus t2 over l if you remember our previous case, it was minus K A dt over dx. And I have told you that that negative is due to this temperature difference. Because if we take it as T1 minus T2, it will be like K A dt T1 minus T2 over delta x. But if we want to take it in the convention which involves final state minus initial state, and that negative will appear here. But again, that won't affect your answer. So K is equal to 0.8 area, 48 square meter. T1 is 15, T2 is 4, and thickness is 0.25 meter. So the answer is Q dot is equal to 1690 watt, and that becomes 1.69 kilowatt. So that is the answer in kilowatt for the system. And if you go to the part B, where we have been given a time of 10 hours, so multiplying 1.69 kilowatt with 10 hours to give answer in 16.9 kilowatt hour, and we have been given the cost formula amount of energy multiplied by unit cost of energy, 16.9 kilowatt hour multiplied by 0.08 dollar per kilowatt hour so that kilowatt hour will cancel with this and we will get answer of 1.35 dollar means a loss of 1.35 dollar because of non-existence of insulation and that is considered as the heat loss and associated cost system so that's how we have understood the concept of conduction but obviously in the next lecture we will also understand it in more detail and Again, we will solve another numerical related. So that's it from this lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned.